and Robert Inwood. I think it was in like the end of January and she got here <laughs> Thursday and she'll be back home by probably mid-May. It, it's a long train ride. This girl went through hell to come out here. Oh, but, but you guys know that, that Tuesday also uh, is a, a phenomenal musician, vocalist, singer. And years ago, uh, I had the honor of, of meeting Sam Shepard, uh, and he doesn't like to fly, and he used road trips to write poems and plays and movie scripts, because there, you get into a rhythm. I, and I envy this. You, know, you get into a rhythm on a train. You know, you're not moving slow on a train. You're just not, you know, on, at sort of like digital text jet level, and there's something about that rhythm that I think is really uh, complementary to the way an artist thinks and creates, right. you know. Yeah, I know it is. It's really, really relaxing. It was just that last night that I was saying, please, you gotta get me off of this thing. It was just the third night. It was kind of Man cannot live on French toast alone. <laughs> no, <laughs> me pancakes. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do like we always do if you have a question. Uh, please raise your hand and we'll call on you. Uh, when we call on you, if you would, if you're not already standing up, uh, just stand up and really project your question because there's a lot of people in here and it just make it easier for everyone to hear. So whoever has a question, raise your hand. Back corner. Uh, what do you think of a remake of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street? Somebody has asked that. Oh, 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 oh. First question out of hey, the box. You, you got, listen, fans, you guys are all fans. I'll answer first because, you know, everybody always asking about Jackie. And, uh, you guys understand the phrase, it comes with the territory. Ho I, I, I grew up in Hollywood, and it comes with the territory. They remake everything. And the reason is, there's only so many stories that we talk about around the campfire in humanity. Boy meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, you know, boy kills girl, boy meets boy, whatever. <laughs> boy slashes boy. But there's boy only meets boy so girl. many, yeah. And, 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 and you guys, and it's, you guys love a particular genre and a blend of genres, cyberpunk, horror, fantasy, science fiction, etc. The thing is, there's only so many stories. And, and sometimes, a new generation won't respond. Now, there is an unfortunate thing here, but before you blame Platinum Dunes or Warner Brothers, blame the kids that won't see a black and white movie. You know? And they are forced to do this because of that. And in all fairness, they meant well with this film. They, they, they got into something called second guessing. They didn't try to exploit I mean, my God, there's some really wonderful talent in that movie besides Jackie Earl Haley. Rooney Mara, you guys throw the dragon tattoo. She's the, one of the best things in the social network. Uh, I just starred on an episode of Criminal Minds with Kyle Gallner, who was in Jennifer's Body, played my son in Red. This guy's a terrific young actor. And people meant well. I think they second-guessed themselves. And my criticism is that by the time the movie starts, all the Elm Street kids are already so damaged that you don't see a little bit of their light, their warmth, their sort of pre-plagued condition. And it's more difficult to invest in them emotionally. 
and care about them because of that. You just sort of know they're all going to go down, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, we're trapped in a skyscraper. Uh, there's a young black guy. He's going to die first in the elevator. You know? <laughs> we know what's coming. And th because they were a little bit gloomy, you know, I think that we, you didn't invest in them. But there's some remarkable images in that film. Um, there's, some, there's some good acting in that film, and there's some good writing in that film. It's real hard to follow in the footsteps of even an accidental classic, like the original Nightmare on Elm Street, and some of its sequels. It's hard to follow their footsteps. There might be somebody out there. There might be a Peter Jackson. There might be somebody out there that could do a great Wizard of Oz, but do you really want to see a remake? Because here's what happens. Every time I watch The Nightmare on Elm Street that I'm in with Tuesday, or then every time I watch Wes Craven's new Nightmare, I find something a little new in it. And I'm in the goddamn thing, and I discover it. <laughs> and I can watch Wizard of Oz, and I'll catch something in Judy Garland's eyes, or I'll catch something that's set up with the three farmhands who become the Tin Man and the you know, and, and the scarecrow and the lion, you'll catch some other level, peeling back of the onion. And that's why we need to encourage people to at least check out originals, not to thwart remakes or sequels or prequels. You know, everybody was poo-pooing the prequel to John Carpenter's The Thing. Not the original thing, but the prequel to John Carpenter's Thing by the guy who did Let the Right One In. There's some really interesting stuff in that. There's some really good stuff in that. Uh, and, and I think we just have to kind of forgive that and understand that if we're gonna use our cell phones and if we're gonna be convenient on the internet that we sort of have to forgive Hollywood a little bit you know, for remaking stuff because they can't get people to watch Casablanca anymore in a remastered DVD. I've, I've, that was my rant. <laughs> okay, Freddie in the back. Question? You have a question? No, don't ask me. I, we need some. But, but let, let me rest for a minute. Ask Tuesday or Dave a question. I feel like I just kind of went off. I just got back from an Italian restaurant. I've had a little too much wine. <laughs> So you're probably feeling good right now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> somebody, choose somebody else. A question for Dave or Tuesday? Tuesday. <laughs> any questions uh, for Dave. Tuesday? <laughs> uh, you don't want to get questions for me. <laughs> any questions for Tuesday? Who has a Hi, question guys. right here? You have a question? Hi, no. they won't no. ask me. <laughs> Just a question? What do you have? Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> well, I wanted to actually ask you both and get your opinions. First off, with Freddy Krueger, he's caught so many nightmares and stuff, even though he's awesome. But, um, I want to know what your fears and what's your biggest nightmare that you have ever had, both for you and Tuesday. Tuesday? What's your, what scares you? Oh, my God. I would have to say that. Flying scares the hell out of me. That's what I have nightmares about, basically. Do you think that's a, is that a control thing or what do you think? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, I would rather be driving than playing, I think. And I would feel better. But like when you perform, I see, I've got to tell you something. I'm getting older, you guys. And I thought I was going to outgrow stage fright. And you're still performing live. Do you. Are you, are you scared just before the lights come up and you go oh, on? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Always. Because so that doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. Yeah. It's always a little made out glitter in there. <laughs> I'm kind of scared of, you know, I used to be scared of snakes, but then I did this little B movie called Python because we could improve. <laughs> uh, don't applaud, but we could improve on we could improve we could improve on the technology from the original Anaconda, you know, with Jennifer Lopez and John Voight. So even though our movie's a little cheesy, our effects are actually better. And so I did this movie, but they gave me this baby python, and they put it in a sling in my armpit under my seersucker suit. And uh, I, I actually love this, this little baby python. So I kind of got over my snake, you know, fear. 
and I was, I, and I, I also, I'm kind of afraid of police, like that Alfred Hitchcock, Janet Leigh, the Psycho, the Rearview Mirror. I just always think they're gonna get pull me over. Yeah, yeah. And I don't speed anymore. I don't even have a stick shift anymore. But I always think they're gonna get me, you know. So I do. Have, I get that kind of thing in my stomach, and now I have a new one. And, and maybe, Dave, maybe you, and maybe Tuesday have this, or some of you, but. You know, you, you, I know everybody has anxiety at different times in their life, you know, or worry or stress. And I, I was pretty mellow for a long, long time. And then my dad got sick. And I think what happens to you guys is some little thing breaks in you. Some little synapse. And I got really worried about my dad's health. And ever since then, I've started having those, oh, I've got an algebra test dreams. And sometimes they're about like a, they're about a play I did, or a TV show, uh -huh. or song lyrics that I can't remember. And one of my recurring ones, and I wrote, the, I think I put this in my book, is that I, I'm backstage, and the lights are on the stage, and I can't remember my first line, and I've hidden the script backstage, and I can't find it. Someone's moved it, and it's like a continuous loop, you know, like the Craven. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, when Lisa Wilcox leaves, you know, her, the drive-in and gets in the truck and goes back and gets in the truck and goes back and gets in the truck. That's really what it's like. But it, it happens at different stages. But it can be, that can be a nightmare. That can be a real scary thing. And these little things clip off. And I think something really small in you breaks. You, you stress out about a, a test in college or a student loan or, you know, a, a, a job, or a bad boss, or, or an ill parent, and, and, and that can turn into kind of symbolic nightmare fodder, you know, that can manifest itself. It did with me, at least. I mean, that's what's, you know, that's one of the, you know, the boogers about getting old. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting better. Uh, I wish I could go on and sing songs a lot. I think that would scare the bejesus out of me. I don't know how you do it. You never know. No. Yeah, you never well, know. <laughs> well, I see a gentleman here.